Hey everybody. I had um, was hoping to um, be a little bit more active than I was on my YouTube channel over the summer, but I chose instead to really knuckle down to retake my NASM test for the third time. Um, I came so close the second time, I got a point away. And it paid off because as of August 18th, I am officially a NASM certified personal trainer. One of the proudest moments in my life. I've been waiting for this for so long. Um, I am currently w looking for work and I'm support hopefully going to be setting up online personal training real soon. So let's talk about bodybuilders and the routines they use. If you um, take a look at your latest bot your favorite bodybuilder and look at his interviews in your favorite bodybuilding magazines or even the latest bodybuilding magazine on the stands right now whether it be muscle and fitness or muscular development you name it and when he's asked what he does a lot of the times he'll tell you it's a split routine sometimes in a, a very complicated split routine no we're talking a split routine that consists of chest and back one day um, Strictly quads one day, strictly legs and uh, strictly hamstrings, another shoulders, arms, and calves on another, and um, some uh, some days chest again with abs to finish it off. And this will be a five day routine. This will be split into five days, multiple exercises with three sets of twelve, uh, which we'll get into for the average lifter or the not so advanced lifter, if you will, in a bit. And sometimes they'll train twice a week. If you ever watched Ronnie Coleman's old videos from the early 2000s, when he's training for the Mr. Olympia in um, Metroplex in Arlington, Texas, you'll see that he trained sometimes twice a day. And his routines were organized as such that um, accordingly that some were some exercises, some workouts were meant strictly for strength as you used higher sets with lower rep ranges and barbells and dumbbells only. And then there are other workouts from that same routine where he would strictly use machines and cables with um, less sets but higher rep ranges for the sake of hypertrophy. But there's been a change lately. It's not been a huge change, so to speak. It's not on, uh, you don't see it in magazines, you'll see it online. You look on bodybuilding.com especially, I'm going to bring that up because Dr. Jim Stepani, who was, a, oh, who was strictly all for the benefits of split routines, had recently saw the light and has been converted to an advocate of full body training. He released an article last Halloween called The Four Reasons Why You Should Be Doing Full Body Training. And he discussed the benefits as pertains to strength, fat loss, whole body conditioning, full body health, all valid points based on a research uh, that he had, just had read up on, which we'll get to also because he also discussed this when I saw him at the Philly Fit Expo this past April, and that video is on my YouTube channel, although it's difficult to hear. That's why I'm not gonna necessarily post it on the article that this is based on, or even in this video. Um, even Scott Herman from Scott Herman Fitness, speaking of social media, he has suddenly become an enthusiastic advocate of full body training, and as we as we're doing this video, he is preparing to publish his first full body workout, and he has been talking about why things like three sets of twelve is killing your gains, and he brought some valid points which we're going to bring up in a minute or two. So I'm happy that full body training is uh, seeing somewhat of a revival at least on social media. Um, but is it new? Of course not. Full body training has been the go-to template of sorts for beginning and intermediate lifters for the longest time. Mostly because 
um, beginners are the ones who see the gr see muscle growth the quickest. But what you might not know is that some of the biggest bodybuilders of the day back in say the 40s and 50s were relying solely on on full body training. So it can be done. Let's take a look at Reg Park, the British iconic bodybuilder, Reg Park. Reg Park is the man who made Arnold Schwarzenegger want to become a bodybuilder because he had such a rugged, rough, big physique. Reg Park has the distinction of being the first bodybuilder to compete in the Mr. Universe at a body weight of over 200 pounds and more. Reg Park also has the distinction of being the second person but the first bodybuilder to bench press more than 500 pounds. He had a very built, aesthetic, yet powerful physique. And how did he do that? By full body training. Reg Park believed that in order to um, gain size, you had to train for strength. You had to be strong in order to be big. He also believed in the compound movements, the squat, the bench, the deadlift, with a few other uh, assistance exercises to uh, prevent muscle imbalances. Sound familiar yet? His rep scheme and set scheme was also very, uh, should, now, should be very familiar because it's a now well public popular five by five. Eventually Reg Park but uh, would do somewhat of a split routine, but his bread and butter was always uh, a full body routine. On the other side of that coin is Steve Reeves. Steve Reeves was the uh, aesthetically pleasing, more streamlined version of uh, Reg Park. He too believed in full body training. But um, a few aspects to his training that um, separate him, that, dis that distinguish him from Reg Park is that he believed in taking walks power walks four days a week up to a mile or maybe two miles for metabolic conditioning he also had organized his training in a way that he would start with the shoulders and gradually work his way down to the legs because he understood that with um training full body doing an overhead press after doing legs was not going to be easy and I can attest to that. I could tell you right now. Try doing no my my current my current program has safety bar squats followed by overhead press followed by deadlift. Trying to do uh, and if you're training early in the morning like I am doing overhead presses after safety bar squats is not easy. It's one of the reasons why I'm probably going to switch that real soon. And they both again had very powerful physiques. And they both had very symmetrical physiques all because they were constantly stressing their body that's the thing constant stimulus rich park um trained five sets of each exercise three times a week at most because he was constantly stimulating them quality exercise has been quality reps quality sets he could he could stimulate them he could attack them more because so, why attack just why do just three sets when you and stop there when you're starting to feel the burn or the benefits at least so full body training was the lay of the land at least until the 70s at most the 80s and one of the people to blame for this is Reg's own protege Arnold Schwarzenegger but of course Full body workouts would be back. So why the change? Um, what made someone like Jim Stepani, who swears by split body routines, to suddenly decide that um, full body is the way to go? Simple, honestly, because he um, when I saw him at the at the uh, Philly Fit Expo back in April. One of the things he discussed was gene activation. If you're constantly training one body part all the time, 
you're, you're, you're attaining gene activation because you are constantly stressing out that muscle. You are constantly stimulating it. And the, th the one muscle he used as an example, and I'll use it too because it makes a lot of sense when you think about it, is chest. Let's say you're going to train chest, okay? Let's say you're training chest on Monday and you do four different exercises. Bench press, you do dumbbell bench press, you do cable, fl uh, cable chest flies, and then you do dumbbell flies or something, okay? Cable crossovers, excuse me, followed by dumbbell flies or something. You do three sets of 12, and then you stop for the rest of the week. Guess what? You're letting your muscle waste away. Why? Because you're not using the muscle why as much as you do say the arms or the legs or even the back for that matter so now let's take that and let's spread the volume across three days let's choose one quality exercise per day to train the chest for three days a week now we're going to do constant stress constant stimulation say on monday and this is mostly jim's example you, tra you, you train with the bench press on Monday, and then on Wednesday you'll do dumbbell bench press, and then the next day you'll do uh, dumbbell flies or cable crossovers or whatever you want to do. And because you are using just one exercise, you can do you quality exercise at that. You can now do more than three sets you can constantly push that muscle the, the specific adaptation of imposed demands says that your body will adapt to the stress that's placed on it so therefore your body is going to be forced to grow because it's not being given a chance to rest lee haney used to say stimulate not not annihilate and that's a prime example of it you're not killing your muscles with four exercises in one in one day. You're giving you're not giving it a chance to rest either. That's why beginner programs such as starting strength and even strong lifts for that matter, especially starting strength because I did it, were so successful. Um, especially with the lower body though, uh, because with starting strength, I'm I'm squatting three times a week. Between March and May of this year, when I came back from my torn cartilage, which by the way isn't healed completely still, I was able to bring my squat back to 290 pounds within not even three months because I'm constantly stressing my quads. I was able to bring my deadlift back up to 325 pounds in not even three months because... At one point, I was doing deadlift three times a week, and then I was resting when it was necessary. But it was my lower back, especially with hyperextensions, was constantly being stimulated, especially the hamstrings. Uh, you also have um, Stuart McRoberts' 1991 Hard Gainer Bible Brawn. Um, Stuart was an advocate of full body training. He realized that after years of struggling with split routines, that they weren't working because he wasn't his constantly stimulating his entire body. That book was meant to revive very dreaded programs like the 20 rep squat routine for a reason, but they're full body programs that were used by guys like Peary Raider, the uh, creator of Iron Man magazine who went on to be 120 pounds off of that to being 200 pounds and winning competitions. Having said that, look at Rich Park and Steve Reeves and John Grimmick. Yes, full body routines can be used for a more advanced lifter, but the way it's set up will be up to you and your goals and your time schedule. That's something Stuart McRoberts stresses in Braun. You have to decide your sets and reps because I don't know you. I don't know who you are. I don't know if you're training for size, for power, for hypertrophy, for all three. I could give you an example of stuff, and I probably will. My father uh, trained 531, and he trained in R&J Health Studio uh, in that, that 
that dungeon gym in Brooklyn that you see in Pump and Iron. He trained there. He transitioned from bodybuilding to powerlifting, doing a full body routine, and he went on to, at 200 pounds, bench 420 pounds and squat in the low 400s also. Because he was constantly stimulating his chest. He was constantly stimulating his full body. Uh, not an ounce of fat on him. It can be done. I myself am about to probably switch to a full, uh, to a high, more hypertrophy routine from strength. Uh, my short term goal clearly to be for size. And I'm going to adjust my routine as such from a three day routine to a four day routine straight out throughout three days. So let's say, for example, I'm going to warm up every for four days. And this is something you can use too. Four days a week, I'm going to warm up with hyperextensions, uh, which is expired by Reg Park. I regret not, I regret stopping doing hyperextensions once I stopped doing starting strength for uh, the sake of a stronger lower back because a stronger lower back helps with a stronger core, which therefore helps with a stronger deadlift and squat. So Let's say I warm up with uh, hyperextensions every single workout. And from there, let's say I do squats. And then I follow up with incline bench press, followed up with uh, one-arm dumbbell rows, okay? Which is kind of what I'm doing currently. The next day, I will do leg press followed by bench press, followed by whether it be lat pull-downs or... Uh, chin-ups or some kind of a pulling movement okay i'm going to do a lot of stimulation on my lats i currently train my lats twice a week i'm going to definitely switch it to three followed by or at least i'm going to switch it around to um after bench press i'll do dumbbell shoulder presses and then i'll do a lat the lat movement day three will be um That'll be the day I give my legs a break, so to speak. I will do overhead. I will do overhead presses to start, followed by maybe dips or dumbbell flies, followed by bicep curls, followed most likely by. Um, sh Actually, no, that's going to be it. And then on the last day. I will not train legs at all because I will be deadlifting or maybe I'll do something to uh, warm for my deadlift like the safety bar squat okay followed by dumbbell flies for the chest again followed by um, maybe lateral raises with external rotation followed by the deadlift in all of those uh, days I'm stimulating most parts of my body. Yes, I just realized I did not mention training calves. I guess I'm team no calves like everybody else. Perhaps I'll add calves in there on um, day one or day two. It'll probably behoove me to do so. Um, maybe some forearm work. However, you might notice that aside from the one constant, which is hyperextensions, every single day to warm up or to prepare your lower back. I didn't blatantly did not mention anything about sets and reps. Why? Because again, that's up to you and your goals. I know that I'd be doing that in a 5-3-1 fashion or at least a 3-5-1 fashion. But at least for the compound movements. But for everything else, that's up to you. However, a good recommended set and rep scheme would be six sets of six to eight reps that way you are constantly stimulating your lower body your your entire body one quality exercise per workout everything i chose in that just now was quality exercises and you should do the same thing so you have one quality exercise per body part per day so there's no need to do less than six reps, six sets. You should definitely be doing more than three sets of 12. And you're definitely pushing the blood through your body. You're de you are using 
muscle groups that recruit the most fibers, which acquire gene activation, which require which acquire growth. If you now, and that's what I have to say about that. That's how you can can benefit from full body training. If you want me to help you with your full body training, if you think that this article, that this video or this article that's attached to it have piqued your interest in full body training and you want me to help you with your goals, drop me a line, send me an email. Everything will be down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope to do more soon. Thanks for watching.